This is not your mother's middle age. No longer is waking up each day, living the wash, rinse, and repeat cycle acceptable. We have the life lessons, the relationships, the wins, and the losses with which to navigate to our highest self without hesitation and without fear leading the way. We have been there and done that, and so we have so much to offer the world and each other. So join me on this journey speaking to ordinary women doing extraordinary things for new insights, new ideas, new medical breakthroughs, and new life lessons. You will be inspired to find your best life here and now. My name is Wendy Charles McGuire, and this is your Second Wind Podcast. Here we are, Second Winders, and I am so honored and privileged to share with you a woman who has had such a dynamic and interesting path that has gotten her to where she is today, more than a second wind. Cynthia James is a transformational specialist, a wife, a mother, a minister, a television star, a TEDx speaker, an author, and the co-founder of AWE Academy of Women Entrepreneurs. Her story is incredible and starts with a bang and then fizzles out and then a nudge and then a voice and then a holla and the lessons learned, the past created and chosen will leave you feeling empowered and inspired. I am so excited. Thank you so much, Cynthia, for being here with us today. Well, I am thrilled to be with you. Thanks so much for having me. Oh my gosh, your story is so cool. We could have, I would have listened to you tell your story for hours, but you're a super busy woman. So let's dive right in. I mean, you're like, I'm next. I got this. I got this. I got this. Totally cool. So let's start because you have so many second wins, but let's talk about the one that, that you think is your biggest that all those other ones brought you to. Yeah. So, um, I was in a very large, um, spiritual community. I was an associate minister. I was overseeing women's um, organizations, um, our GLBTQ, uh, you know, the music ministry. I mean, I had a pretty big portfolio and I was teaching a lot and speaking a lot and, um, and things were going well. And I had, you know, I had written uh, uh, already three books and, and all of a sudden I started being uncomfortable. And, um, and in that discomfort, you know, I was exhausted and um, I finally went to a doctor and basically told me that I had an adrenal challenge. And in that adrenal challenge, I had to take a three month sabbatical and I had to be still, which is not my natural state of being. I, I, right. I'm definitely a mover and energetic uh, bunny. Well, in that time, I started noticing that there were some familial patterns that were working in my life and that, that a lot of my identity was tied up in accomplishment uh, and especially accomplishment for others so that I could be validated and loved. So I got better and I went back to work, but this energy would not stop. And so about eight months later, I, you know, I've been meditating for like years and years and years. And in my meditation, I was told to get an office that it was time for me to leave, which made no sense. There was nothing wrong. Yeah. Go get right? How do, how do you justify that, right? Yeah. And so I have learned that we have an inner guidance, that we have an intuitive nature. And so to listen, you know, because when I haven't listened, it's been interesting. And so <laughs> I, I went to the senior minister and I said, I need an exit strategy. And he said, why? Where are you going? I said, I don't know. And he said, well, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. He said, are you starting a church? No. Are you going to another church? No. Well, then what are you going to do? I said, I do not know. And he said, do you know that this sounds crazy? I said, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. But there's something calling me and I don't know what it is. And so I left. I got an office with two other people. I had no clients. I had no marketing strategy. I had none of that. So I just prayed and meditated and journaled. And ask the universe, what's the highest vision for me? Out of that, 
my coaching business evolved, my Women Creating Our Futures and the Awe Academy birth. I mean, so in the last eight years, my life has, my life has changed dramatically. That's amazing. That is amazing because that's not how it started. No. It started. Why don't you bring us back to how it started? Because it's kind of amazing how you transformed. You help people transform, but you transformed. Yeah. So I, I was born in Minneapolis. Um, I, my mother was a single mother. My biological father was an alcoholic and my stepfather was a wife beater and a pedophile. So my childhood was crazy. It was violent and crazy and unpredictable. And uh, I thought that that was the norm. You know, we were on welfare. We were standing in lines to get cheese and all this kind of stuff. And I thought that, that was what life, what it was, right? Mm-hmm. But what I knew is that my mother really was into education. And she uh-huh. said, you need to get educated. So I figured if I could do well in school, possibly I could get out of this situation, you know, and my mother, oh, my mother, bless her. This could not happen today when I'm going to tell you. She was on welfare and at 11 o'clock at night, she would go to this hospital under an assumed name, work from 11 to seven, come get us ready for school, go to sleep, get up at, get, and get us ready for dinner go back to sleep and then go to work. I mean, and I don't know, you know, today you couldn't do that with social security. And all oh, this no, stuff. no. Oh but my but it was how she took care of us so that we weren't living in rat infested, crazy places because that's how we had started. And so uh, there was something in me also that said, uh, this will not be my reality. I, I will not be on welfare. I, this is not who I'm going to be. And I didn't know at the time about, setting intentions. And I didn't know about manifestation, but clearly there was something in me that said, I'm more than this. And I'm going to create another reality. Wow. So you did well in school. Yep. And, and how did that, where did you end up? So you graduate from high school. Yeah. I, um, while I was in high school, I was a cheerleader. I was on the debate team. I was secretary of my class. Um, You were that girl. You were that girl. I was that girl. Yeah. You know, and, and it was interesting because I wasn't part of the clique, the, you know, the, the cool girls that wore the fabulous purses and clothes and all that kind of Mm -hmm. stuff, but I was smart and I sang and I did all this stuff. So my popularity was around my personality. I mean, that, that's what I really think. And, um, and so I I left there, I, I, I started going to college and I worked at night in a data processing. It, it was when they had those machines where the data processing with those yeah. cards you put into things. Yeah. So would do that. And then I'd go and I'd sleep for a little bit and I'd get up and I'd go to school. And I, um, um, I did that for qu- quite a while. And then I left there and I, I, I got a job working in a, a, a hospital um, as a, as a you know, kind of an aide, um, but it was on the psych ward, which, you know, which today I know kind of it, influenced what I do today because I was really good with the people, even though I had no uh, training. Right. Okay. And so I, um, that's I, on a whole nother set of skills. Oh, totally. But I, but because, because of my ability to kind of transform myself and to, to create my own persona in school beyond, cause mm-hmm. I didn't have money and prestige beyond your limitations and boundaries. Yes. A hundred percent. And so so then I did that, but then it was like, I got restless and um, I saw an ad in the newspaper that said trans world airlines is looking for hostesses. And I thought, well, I want to travel. I want to see the world, you know, what have I got to lose? So I show up at this interview and they hire me. And so I, I, I leave school. I go to Kansas city. I go through this training and it was really intense because in that, that day and time, you know, airline hostesses had prestige, you know, and they were, they had to dress a certain way and weigh a certain thing and look a certain way. So I I went through that training and they sent me to New York to, um, to fly out of New York. And so I, I flew everywhere and it, it was all of a sudden a whole nother world opened up for me. Wow. I mean, because I got to see museums and I got to see art and I 
I got to see operas and, and things like that, that, that were not a part of my childhood. Right. 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 And then, well, so take us forward because then how did you end up in television? Like, how do you go from the airline? Hello, may I get you a gin and tonic to, and here, put your, put your seatbelt on like this to television. What was that leap? Well, it was, well, it was, (laughs) you know, people say, you know, people really don't, won't believe your life because it's like you've had like a nine live cat live. Right? Yes, you have. Yes. Right. So I did, you know, I did a bunch of stuff, uh, but in New York, I mean, I left the airlines and I worked in urban development. I did all this stuff, oh, yeah. but, but, but the energy of New York and the lifestyle was too much for my soul. And so Ooh. I started spiraling down and I not taking care of myself and I was depressed. And, and at the time, you know, um, you know, I would drink martinis cause I thought they looked cool, you know, yeah. and I would, you know, I would try to smoke a joint or whatever, but my system does not like alcohol and drugs. My, you know, I, my, my father being an alcoholic probably influenced that on some level, but my chemistry doesn't like it. And so mm-hmm. I would have these highs and lows and, and, And I was spiraling and something in me said, you know, you need to get out of here. So even though I felt like a failure, I went back to Minnesota. I went back home and and I said, well, I can model because I modeled in high school. And so I got a um, um, I went to a photographer and I said, I need pictures for a portfolio. And he said, "Okay." And he took these pictures. And when we finished, he said, the Miss Minnesota Universe pageant is looking for girls and you should you should send your picture. And I went, yeah, right. They're going to have a <laughs> uh, You know, I don't think so. And he said, and what year was this, Cynthia? This was, what this was, this was 70 to the end of 72 going into 73. Okay. Okay. And so, you know, he just, he didn't even deal with my, you know, uh, comeback. He said, you never know, submit your pictures and, and see. So it was kind of like a dare. So I'm like, Okay, so anyway, they call me in for an interview and there's this table of people and I'm sitting there and they're asking me questions. But here's the thing. I didn't care because I knew I wasn't going to get it. And so I just answered the questions from my authentic self, you know. And so I was shocked when they said you're in the contest. (laughs) And and, and I didn't tell anybody because I was so clear I wasn't going to win. And so so I I, I told my mother, my grandmother and my brother. Right. And so the, the day of the pageant comes and, you know, we do all it, USA doesn't have a uh, talent. They just gowns and swimsuits and all that stuff. So so I did that, you know, and then we're all standing up and they say, oh, and here's our top five. And they call my name. And <laughs> and I think, oh, isn't this great? This is going to be great for my modeling career because I've been one of the finalists. Right. Right. And they go Number four, number three. And then there's only two of us left. And I'm like, well, I'm going to be the runner up. This is great. You know, this is historic, right? They have never even you had a still, final. You still. I, I was still. I, yeah, it was. No, I, that wasn't happening. And when they said, and so Miss Minnesota Universe 1973 is Cindy James. I, it took a moment for me because I see my mother and my grandmother and my bro- jump up. And I'm like, oh, MJ, I've won this. <laughs> It was it was beyond anything I could have imagined because it was historic. And um, and they said, yes, and she'll be going to New York to compete for Miss USA. And I uh, at that point, I thought, oh, I, I don't know. I really want to go to New York. Yeah, right? I, I don't know if I can do this. What if I don't do well? So anyway, it ends up I, I go and 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 I don't win. And there, and there, it, it, there was a lot of disappointment. And because of it. I, I, I went back home and I just said, well, maybe i just need to get a job. And my family was pressuring me to get married, but this man comes up and cause I was singing someplace. And he said, yeah, you're a singer. And we haven't even really talked about that. You've yeah, I've been singing CD. since I was, since I was in high school. Well, so the man said, I, uh, I have this band that's traveling around the country. Um, it's called yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And, um, I would like for you to be one of the lead women. 
and we'll pay you and um, you, you'll have a contract. And so, um, so I thought, what have I got to lose? And so I, I joined this group. There's me and this other girl from Washington, D.C. and this white guy from, from South Dakota who had this amazing voice. I mean, amazing. So we start traveling and it goes really well for, you know, almost a year. And then it starts to fall apart and it, the band breaks up in Vegas and, and I'm getting to TV. Really, I am. <laughs> so while we're there, there's this man named John Gregory and his wife named Helene. John Gregory had worked with Errol Flynn and all of these stars in the studio system as a, a, a voice coach and an acting coach. And his wife was uh, an extraordinary dancer. So she worked with dancers and they had opened this center in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And so um, um, Doug and I, the other lead singer, we decided to stay there and go to this school and, um, and up level our skills. And so you already knew you wanted to up level. Totally. totally. Keep going. <laughs> Don't just stop. Right. Cause I knew, I knew that, that if you just think you've arrived, then you move into stagnation. Mm. And I, there's and, a nugget. There's write yeah. that down. There's a nugget. <laughs> okay. So I, I went through this training and, um, Oddly, I got hired at the MGM Grand. They had a show called Hallelujah Hollywood, and um, they had a line of black dancers. I didn't know it when they hired me, but I also looked like um, the lead, one of the leads, a, a black girl. And so they hired me as a dancer, but they also hired me to be her understudy. And so I did that and I danced. So when you're in a show like that, you learn to operate on a big stage. You learn to to emote, you learn to bring energy because you're really, you're dancing, but you're acting, right? Yeah. And so I, that went on for a couple of years. And then I got an opportunity to go to Los Angeles to audition for The Wiz. It, they were, the, 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 the company in New York was going to be there, but they were going to have a road company. And so I go there and I audition. Well, I don't get picked, <laughs> but I, I meet this amazing man um, and we start this kind of incredible relationship and I moved to Los Angeles and it starts my, it, it really jump starts my whole career. We got jobs working on Princess Cruise Line, singing and dancing. We were going to be the, the black Fred and Ginger Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. And, you know, oh getting the I'm exhausted already. I know it's it was big. It was it was a lot. Wow. Okay. Uh, I really believe that I came on this planet to experience life. I really believe that we are gifted by being in human form. Mm -hmm. And there was something in my soul that said, "Take advantage of this gift." Yeah. And so I think that that's I, because it was always this drive within me. And so, so in in LA. I finally got an agent. I started getting small roles and I got a, I got what they call an under five. It's under five lines, you know, on a, a on a soap. It was on days of our lives. And um, I was a nurse named uh, Sally Johnson. And, you know, I don't, I think I did. I was there for two or three times or whatever. And it turned out to, um, to be um, what a I did. Catalyst. Well, yeah, because what happened was probably a year later, I get a call from them offering me a role. Right. Was that the Lexi role? Yes. A different yeah. character, totally different character. So Lexi and I, I, I'm i on there. I, I don't know, it must have been about two and a half, three years. And in the meantime, I'm doing MacGyver and I'm doing, you know. You're uh, doing guest all, appearances on other shows. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so it cool. Was, it was, it was such a gift for me because what I realized today is between singing in the band, between Hallelujah Hollywood and all the acting and singing stuff, it prepared me to be on large stages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Oh my gosh. Okay. Then you, you're, you got married and he was a fairly big star as well. Yeah, and yes. then that didn't actually work out as you had hoped. 
No, it did not. Did not. Um, it was, um, you know, he was definitely a star and, uh, our, you know, my lifestyle changed again because here we were living in Malibu and traveling all over the world and doing all of this stuff. And he had, you know, drug issues and um, uh, it, it eventually kind of blew up the relationship. But in the middle of that, we adopted um, uh, a child from from St. Louis who, you know, whose mother was challenged. Ultimately, I think she had 10 children. Oh my gosh. And, and, um, um, and couldn't take care of them. And it's one of the reasons why I, I get, you know, kind of on my soapbox about all that's going on about women's rights, because, you know, you can have whatever belief you want, but who's going to take care of all these children you want to bring on the planet and there's no system. Right. Right. And so we, we adopted this child and, and then our marriage broke up and, and then, this child, whose name is Sharon, his biological brother, because she, you know, she had had other children, um, came to live with us, and I adopted him. So, so I had two adopted kids, and I was a single mom, and um, and my acting career. And this is what I want to tell everybody: when it looks like things are falling apart, pay attention because I believe. It's the universe saying there's a new direction. So, something else is occurring. So acting is like falling apart after I have been hugely successful. And um, I get, I decide I have to go to work. And so I go to work in a media management company. And um, yeah, because you said, you said you were suddenly like, why is this drying up for me? What's going on? I've been on Leno. I've done all these things. And yeah. I can't get a job to save my life. But now I have to support these children. I'm a right. single mom. I don't want to go back backwards. That's right. That's right. And I did not want my kids struggling. Right. You know, and so, um, you know, uh, I, I had a home. And so I was, um, because of my visibility, I was in a, a charity called Share. Um, Share Happily and Reap Endlessly. And they did a one-time show a year called Boomtown. And it was like really like one night of Vegas, but that we rehearsed for months and months. And we did the show yeah. they a ton, that ton of money, right? So I went to one of the share ladies and I said, okay, this is what's happening. And she said, oh, well, let me introduce you to my husband. He owns this media company, right? I didn't know what that meant. It, mm -hmm. it turned out to be the biggest media company in, in this country and Disney and all these things. And so- they hired me part-time to work in HR. And over the next three and a half years, I, I got promoted. I worked for a vice president of international sales. I, I did all of this stuff. I, I helped them um, um, become more connected because there were a lot of divisions under this, this VP. And I had gone to school for a master's in spiritual psychology. So I, I was helping them become connected. And um it was, in retrospect, it gave me business acumen that I never would have garnered, I don't think, in the, in the entertainment industry. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Wow. All right. So now, what, what year are we in now? We are in, let me see, uh, the, we are in the 90s. Okay. Because the 90s. Let, me, let me back up one, one thing, though. Yeah. In the 80s, in 1989, I won a show called Star Search as an actress. And that helped me with Days of Our Lives and Open. Oh, the you left out the Star Search. <laughs> well, that's kind of big. That's, it is big. Yeah, that was a big stepping stone for sure. Well, thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> but so I have a question for you. During all of this, and like, especially when you maybe are sitting, having your martini in your in your Malibu home, looking around, okay. Were you ever thinking about where you came from? Or, you know, are you, how did that look for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I did a lot of work on it. When I went to the University of Santa Monica for spiritual psychology, I did a lot of work on it. Yeah, uh, let's, let's go with that because yeah. that's yeah. a good segue. So when did that, so just so y'all know, at some point, Cynthia as she meditates and gets visions, she gets a vision when she's kind of in her, in, as things are kind of falling apart. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. 
Yeah, I, I, I had a vision that I was going to be a minister. And I was like, there's no way. Ministers do not have any fun. I, no. <laughs> uh-uh. And so it got quiet. It stayed quiet. And I went through the University of Santa Monica. I get this. So why did you go through the University of Santa Monica then? Because I felt like I wanted, I wanted to be able to make more money and to do more, to work with people. You know, I mean, I was doing kind of spiritual counseling because I, you know, of the spiritual community I was in. And I was aware that I was really good with people, but I didn't have I didn't have the foundation and I didn't have the skill set to do it on the level I wanted to do it. And so in the University of Santa Monica, what what happened in there was at one point they said, you need to create your own counseling strategy. This was one of the classes Mm -hmm. And what came out of that was what I do today called emotional integration. I mean, I didn't know it at the time because it wasn't quite formed, Um, but it, but it was going to help me, you know, get away from corporate America and really, really just be with people and, and, and be able to support me and my children doing what I loved, doing what I was passionate about. So connecting the dots. So you're, you're working in this media company, you're doing sales for them. You're, you're prospering. You're doing very well with this. Did, is that when you got the download to now be a minister? Uh-huh. And you're like, what? No. wait a second. You want me to blow this up? Right. Yeah. And, and I, had started, I had started, I had started, um, 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 I, 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 I was almost complete with university of Santa Monica um, but it was like, uh, I'm not ready yet to, to launch my, my other business, you know? And, um, and so, but, but then it wouldn't leave me alone. And so I was invited to come to this big conference and, um, and to be in the room, um, kind of as a facilitator. And at the end of the, of the, the, the group being together, um, they had this this beautiful kind of um, talking stick, and so you they they would hand the talking stick mm-hmm. to a person, and the person would say what they got out of this this class. And so I'm sitting there, and this talking stick is going, and I hear internally, "Get down on your knees and tell him." And I'm and and I'm thinking, okay. I must be going crazy because what the heck does that mean? Well, you were all sitting in a circle, right? And then there was a gentleman. Yeah. And and, 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 then yeah, yeah, he was across from me, but I didn't even know what they were saying at the moment. And then it kept saying, get down on your knees. And then I could see that there was this energy with this man. And I literally was like internally going, no, 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 I am not getting down on my knees in front of all these people. I don't have I don't have any idea what to say and and I'm not doing it. And I realize that I'm arguing with the universe. I'm arguing with oh God. Oh my gosh. Whatever you call it, I'm arguing. Yeah. And 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 it was, you know, I've resisted things before, but this was huge. This was the holler. This was a holler. This, this was, was the holler. holler. Yeah. And the and the man, you know, is sharing and it comes back around. And they give the talking stick to me. And now this energy, this voice is loud. Get down on your knees and tell him. So I get up. I kneel before this man. I have no idea what I said because I don't remember. When I get up and he's just staring at me. When I (laughs) I turn around, a a voice says it is no longer a request. And when I sit back down, I realize the dean of the school of ministry is sitting next to me. Mm. And I turn to her and I say, I need an application. I'm coming to school, right? Then the man says, did you come to Atlanta with the group? And I went, no. He said, well, you just described our chapel at the university and you just gave me the answer to my prayer. What? I went, okay. And then it was. I certainly like, didn't mean to do that, sir. Please no. excuse me. <laughs> I'm busy, busy, busy. <laughs> well, I just, all of a sudden my body relaxed and I'm like, okay, I'm going to school. And, 
And then I said, and that, this is another point I want to tell all of you listening. I told the universe, I need this to be easy and grace filled. I do not want this to be a struggle. I've got mm. kids in, in high school. I, you know, I've got to support myself. I really need this to be easy. Wow. Okay. And it's exactly what it was. I finished the program in, um, in three years and I got offered this job in Denver at, at the, the, you know, Mile High probably and Agape are the, probably the two largest new thought um, centers in the world with like 10,000 people. Right. And that's where you, that's where I ended up. That's where you ended up. And you were there for what, like 11 years, Mm -hmm. right? Your dream job. My dream job. Right. And speaking, singing, teaching, counseling. I mean, I was writing, I was creating content and classes and all of it. Recording CDs. You were doing it all. CDs. Yeah, I was. I was. Oh I wrote a God. book, meditation CDs, music CDs. Mm-hmm. Yes. So one thing I want to ask that I, that I don't think we covered, um, why did you decide to go to the University of Santa Monica? And, and the University of Santa Monica is for people to become it's a spiritual college, it's, right? It's a, it's a spiritual counseling college, university. Okay. So okay. you are learning. We learned, I think, like 65 counseling skills in all kinds of modalities, as well as they that that healing takes place at the spiritual level. You know, it's like so you can you can have all of these techniques. But what you want to get people to is the soul level, the essence of who mm-hmm. they come to be. Right. Right. And what made you decide to go there? Because the, you're in the in the throes of like all kinds of uncertainty in your life. You know what? It was um, it was in a prayer. I I I said to God, um, okay, I I don't want to stay here, and I'm not sure what to do, and I would love help. And I and literally, what came in was University of Santa Monica, and I knew a few people that had gone through it, right? Right. But I thought, uh, I don't That's know. That's just more work for you. And you're trying but, to raise these two children by yourself. Right. And so I, but something just was urging me. So I called and I left a message and said, I'd like to speak to someone about your program. Mm-hmm. 20 minutes later, I get a phone call back. Hmm. And it's this amazing man who is so enthusiastic about the university and what it means and talks to me about what I do and, and says, well, you could really use this. I mean, and, I mean, it was, and it was so in sync and so attuned that I was like, pay attention here, Cynthia, there, there's something here, you know? Oh, wow. Okay. And so I, I signed up and I paid for the first year on a credit card, not even knowing how I was going to, how I was going to take care of that credit card. Right. You just had that leap of faith. Yeah. That's incredible. Okay. So now, so now you're now in the church and now we're back to that second win moment, right? Cause now you go in, (laughs) you're like, Hey, I probably need an exit strategy and I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know where I'm going, but, uh, it's been great. So, so, so bring us to what has transpired since and it was and since you got that, and that was a nudge. That also was a download, so to speak, right. for you. Talk about that. Well, I really believe that we are that we are already always getting messages. I just don't think that we're always attuned to understand them, or listen, or trust them. Trust, yes, that's huge. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I leave, and I get this office, and I have no clients, right? And I had you know, I had savings. And um, there is a woman whose name is Lisa Nichols, who was in the, the secret. She, I mean, she's a motivational speaker and teacher. She's, she's pretty well renowned. And, and um, she was in an organization that I was affiliated with. And we were at one of these meetings and something drew me across the room to her. And I asked her if she would pray for me that I could get clarity. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that I was wondering if she mentored people and huh. she said, um, she said, well, I'm happy to pray for you. And she said, 
I don't have the bandwidth in this moment to mentor, but I would, I would like to give you a gift. And I said, okay. She said, come to San Diego and spend a weekend in my global leadership program. She said, just, just come, I'm going to gift it to you. You get there and stay in a hotel, right? And, and you've so, never met this woman before. Well, I met her, but I, but we didn't know each other. Well. Right. It's not like I, she was a, a, a BFF saying, Hey, no, but I was right. aware of, of her celebrity. And I was aware of all th- that she had accomplished. Right. Right. And, um, and so um, I talked to my husband and I booked this flight and I go and I sit there and really I'm in a room with 50 other entrepreneurs and, um, and her team is teaching all of them how to be hugely successful. I think I cried through the whole weekend because first of all, I thought, oh my God, I have no idea what I'm doing. And, mm. um, and what am I doing in this room? And so, um, so her, her, one of her people came up and said, would you like to join the program? And I said, well, I don't know. What does that mean? They said, well, you know, you would come here four times a year and you'd have a coach and you all, uh, uh, you know, and I said, and what is the cost? And they said, $50,000. Ah. And I went $50,000. Oh my God. And, and it was almost like I couldn't breathe. Right. Mm-hmm. But it was something, um, what I teach people is that your body has a language and that it, it, it communicates everything mm-hmm. in my body opened and it made no sense. Right. Really? Right. It just all opened. And so I knew I had the money and savings, but it seemed crazy to take money when I had no job. (laughs) Right. Right. And And what you did have was costing you money. Exactly right. So I called my husband, who's a who's a world renowned photographer, and he was on a shoot in, in Canada. And I said, I need to talk to you about something. And so he says, okay, I'm in the car. Let me, let me get across this bridge and I'll call you right back. So he calls me back and I, and I tell him what, what's happening. And I tell him how astounding this whole thing was. And that I realized I don't know how to run a business. And, and I said, and this program is $50,000. And he said, what does your heart tell you? <gasps> a man told you that. Told me that. crazy. I said, my heart tells me to do it. And he said, you should listen your heart has never led you astray. Wow. Wow. So I go up to Lisa Nichols and I'm crying. And I said, I'm being guided to do this program and I'm scared. And I don't think I belong here. All these people are doing great things. And, uh, and she's just looking at me. And she said, that's because you don't see what I see. Oh, wow. But what I can tell you is that this program will give you the inner vision and the power to manifest what I see. Wow. And so I was like, wow. what I need to do is I need to lean into her consciousness until I can get it. So I went to that program. I went to all, all the weekends. I was with my coach and I had, you know, the coaches were like accountability. Don't come back on the next call. If you haven't done what I've told you to do. Right. So wow. I, okay. I had to deal with money, which was I, my, my, my relationship to money was not so great. Um, and I had to learn how to manage it and how to track it. I had to learn how to get clear about my vision and my mission and I, all of this stuff. And as I'm doing this now, People are starting to come to me as a coach mm-hmm. because I've opened the field and I'm um, and I'm not advertising. They're just coming. Oh, so they're coming and, to your business now that you're doing this course. Uh, yeah, and and wow. so so and so literally, I paid for that fifty. I got that fifty thousand dollars back in a year. Wow! Wow! And, yeah. So it really. It launched um, uh, my my coaching business because I got really clear about what my business was, who my who my ideal client was, um, and uh, and then I started getting invitations to speak mm-hmm. and 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 to and to teach and and to and to charge for for my services. And so in in the last eight years, you know, 
Uh, I, I have this thriving coaching business. I train coaches in my modality. I've, you know, I've got 15 of them now and um, we're getting ready to start a new one. And another one's coming in from Switzerland and one's coming in from Mexico. And, oh, wow. and um, you know, so I have four books under my belt. One's a bestseller. The other award winner is I. Yes. So I, it's really been, um, it's been a testimony to faith because um, when I was growing up, even though my family was crazy, there was, you know, the faith in God was really important. And even though I, I'm not following the faith tradition of my family, those, those um, basics still live with me that, that, you know, that God is loved, that I'm taken care of, that I'm supported, that, that the universe is conspiring for me beyond circumstances. And so it's been, um, it's been an experience extraordinary gift for me. And then I get to teach it to my clients and I get to, we started the Academy of Women Entrepreneurs because what was missing in that leadership program that I went to was, was the holistic, how do you care for yourself? The spiritual part. So we added that into the Academy so that, so that, so that women come when they come through with us, we're not only teaching them about their business, but we're teaching them how to t- love and take care of themselves, how to find their voice, how, how to, to, to be strong in their faith. How to listen. Yes. How to listen. That's amazing. Well, I already had a call with you and your partner, Jean, yesterday for awe. And oh, I'll tell you what, these women are the real deal. I'm so excited to work with them because I got to do all the things, Cynthia. And it can hurt. It's only going to help. But one thing we went over very briefly, and you did get remarried to this amazing man. I did. I did. And that's the man who told me to follow my heart. He, he is, um, he's an internationally renowned photographer. And we met actually in a spiritual community. And um, uh, we've been together uh, for 26 years. We'll be wow. celebrating our 22nd uh, wedding anniversary in a, in a couple of weeks. Oh, that's and, exciting. Yeah. And he's, um, I told God, you know, after my, you know, the marriage failed, I said to God, I want someone who's ready, available for this relationship, spiritually grounded, that we have, that is a seeker and that, and that will love my children. Oh, wow. And that's kind of a tall order. Yeah, it is. Right? Yeah. Did you and, think you were and, setting yourself up for failure? You weren't going to find anybody like that? No, I I you know, I I dated a few people and and they, you know, they weren't great and, and but I was very clear, don't settle. D- mm. Don't settle for less than you want. And so I just put my energy into going to school and the kids and you know, all of that and then I wasn't looking. And that's ah. that's when Carl showed up. Carl. Oh, and then he made you move to a ranch. Well, when I got, when I got <laughs> um, invited to come to Colorado, you know, he, he's an, he's an independent contractor, but he had a lot of clients in Los Angeles. And he said, well, if we're going to Colorado, then I, I want to have a ranch. I, I want to have horse. Right. And so um, he found this amazing place. We live on 12 acres and horse property and, um, and we built a studio here so he can do his work here and I can, and I can also facilitate things here. And, um, and he's incredible with my children and grandchildren. And, um, and we have the same spiritual underpinnings. Oh, love that for you. I love that for you, Cynthia, if you like, okay, there's a couple questions. One is what keeps you going every day? Cause you your energy, your love, it's just pure love that comes out of you and caring. What do you do every day to keep you like, are, do you have days where you're just like, eh, I don't want to get up. I don't want to do that. That's too much. Oh, I don't really want to talk to this person. What is that? You know, I don't have that. Um, I, I'm, you know, just like every other human being, I have moments where my energy is lower than others, but, okay. but spiritual practice is an essential for me. I, I do not get out of my bed before I've done an hour of 
meditation, prayer, journaling, and, and uh, uh, affirmations around what I want to create for the day. Every day? Every day. Every day. Wow. That's your like non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. And then I do, um, I, I get out and I, I do sit-ups and I do stretches. Um, I try to walk, you know, seven days a week, but it may end up only being five because of, mm-hmm. because of my schedule. But exercise, what I learned when I was on that sabbatical is that I wasn't exercising enough. So I exercise and I have a, a treadmill and a, and a BOSU in my house. And I was going to the gym with a trainer three times a week, but after COVID, I kind of just backed off of that and I just mm-hmm. do it at home. And, mm-hmm. and I, and then I eat well, I, I, I really got clear that this thing right here is my body temple <laughs> is a temple. Yes. And yeah. if I don't take care of it, then I will not have the energy to do what I've come here to do. And so I really eat well and, and take care of myself. Um, um, I don't deprive myself, but I have found a lot of nutritionists and people who have products that, that, uh, I can eat that, um, that tastes great, but also serve my body and sustain you and keep your energy level high. Yes. That is amazing. And then if there was something that you wanted to leave with the audience today, like your, your mantra, your, your go-to, right? We all have these like, okay, put this in your head now. What would that be? Well, the first thing I would want to tell everybody is you're a masterpiece in the making. You're masterpiece a masterpiece in the making. I love that. There's no one like you. You're an original imprint. And mm-hmm. so whatever dreams or desires are coming forward in you, there's a delivery system. And so you can choose to be joyous and creative and expansive every single day. And yes. the universe will sync up with you. And the universe will sync up with you and catch you. You're never going to fall. Right, right. Oh, I love that. Cynthia, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to put all the books in the show notes, your awe, all this stuff, how people can find you. I would love some of the listeners. I'm going to do the awe program. It starts in January, you said, is the conference? Well, the conference is in January and the program starts in March. Yeah. In March. Yeah. And, and it would be really neat for women who are finding their second wind, wanting to find their second wind, trying to figure it out learn about the business of it. And if that's what you want to do, come and come and play in the awe category with you. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, Cynthia, thank you so much for your time today. It has been such a pleasure speaking with you. I'm so grateful to have been with you and I love what you're doing. It's necessary. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And until next time, breathe in your second wind. Thank you for listening today. I hope that something you heard made you smile, made you think, and made you feel. If these incredible stories empowered you, awakened you, or left you feeling inspired, make sure to share with a friend and write us a review on iTunes so we can continue to change lives through this content. Make sure you tag us while you're listening on our Facebook group, My Second Wind, or hit the link in the show notes to join the conversation. Until next time, go ahead and breathe in your second wind.